Alrighty folks, let's talk about multiple representations. Um, if you go on Google you will and you search for multiple representations, you'll find a Wikipedia article that talks about multiple representations in math and they've got like 15 different ways to represent mathematical ideas. Um, there are lots of ways, but in most math classes we kind of focus on four four main representations, and they are symbolic, numerical, graphical, and verbal. So what are those? Well, symbolic is algebraic is another word for it. It's what we usually think of as math. Numerical is data, maybe a list of points, or a t-chart or other table. And sometimes people say tabular instead of numerical, and that just means in a table. There's graphical, which has pictures, graphs, diagrams. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. There's my cat <laughs> trying to participate in this exciting process. Okay, there's verbal, which is word problems, descriptions, proofs, situations. This is how we usually encounter problems in real life. And um, something to focus on is being able to transfer between uh, one and the other to translate and and start so for example often in real life we encounter word problems we need to be able to get that into a graph or a table or uh, algebra so that we can solve the problem so let's look at symbolic first since uh, we uh, use it all the time and what I'm going to do is take the same problem and look at it in all of these ways. So, first of all, uh, I'm going to start by finding the slope of the line between two points. And just for giggles, I'm going to take the point negative 1, negative 1, and 2, 8. Sounds like a plan. Okay. If I am working symbolically, I'll probably use the slope formula. And that says that the slope is equal to uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, it doesn't actually matter which is point 1 and which is point 2. Just for convenience, I'm going to call this point 2 and this point 1. So my second y-coordinate is 8. My first y-coordinate is negative 1. My second x-coordinate is 2 and my first x-coordinate is negative 1. Okay, 8 minus negative 1, 8 plus 1 is 9. 2 minus negative 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. 9 over 3 is equal to 3. That's my slope. Okay, now if I would like to write an equation, I'm going to take that slope and one of my points to do point-slope form. So point slope form looks like y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. m is your slope, and x1, y1 is your point. x1 comma y1. It doesn't matter which point I pick, just for fun, I'll pick this one. So y minus 8 equals 3 times x minus 2. And there we have it. That's point slope form. I could have chosen the other one. I could have said y minus negative 1. So y plus 1 equals 3 times x plus 1. And these are two different equations that represent the same line. Okay, so there's point slope form. Both of those are the right answer. Sometimes what people do is they'll take this minus y1 and move it to the other side. Sometimes you'll see y equals m times the quantity x minus x1 plus y1. So an example here would be y equals 3 times the quantity x plus 1 minus 1. And it's not exactly point-slope form, although some math books call it point-slope form, but what it is is function form. And so if you're looking at function transformations, this is actually pretty sweet. So, yeah. We're going to move on and look at slope-intercept form. 
Slope intercept form goes y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, b is the y intercept. And all we have to do, I actually kind of already did half of it getting to function form. Um, you isolate your y and you distribute. So I'm just going to keep working on that. y equals, I'm going to distribute 3 times x plus 3 times 1 minus 1. And so y equals 3x plus 2. OK, standard form looks like some multiple of x's plus another coefficient on my y's equals a constant. And standard form is a little weird in that we don't want fractions or decimals for our coefficients. So a, b, and c have to be integers. Uh, notice also that x and y are on the same side. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to move x over my 3x by subtracting 3x from both sides. So I get negative 3x plus y equals 2. Sometimes people don't like their x to have a negative coefficient. So I could multiply everything by negative 1 and say 3x minus y equals negative 2. Or I could multiply everything by 10 and say 30x minus 10y equals negative 20. You might be getting the feeling that um, there is no unique standard form. That is totally true. Like point slope form, you can represent a, uh, a line in multiple standard forms. OK, numerical. So um, this is not a t-table. It is a super t-table or a super t-chart. And uh, the difference is I just stick my equation in here. I'm going to just stick my uh, slope-intercept form in here. So 3x plus 2. And I'm going to pick some x's like negative 1, 0, 1, 2. I just plug those puppies in. 3 times negative 1 plus 2. 3 times 0 plus 2. 3 times 1 plus 2, 3 times 2 plus 2. Let's see, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, 3 plus 2 is 5, 6 plus 2 is 8. Uh, if I wanted to represent this on a simple t-chart, I could just write it here, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 2, 1, 5, 2, 8. Okay, these are both tabular representations or numerical representations. I could also write a list of points. I could say negative 1, negative 1, 0, 2, 1, 5, and 2, 8. Lots of ways to represent this data numerically. Now, if I wanted to find the slope of the line between two points, I would pick any two xy pairs, and I would find the difference. So here, I think that I'm just going to use two that are, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. You can pick any, any pair of points to find the distance between. I'm just going to do two that are next to each other. To go from negative 1 to 0, I add 1. To go from negative 1 to 2, I add 3. And slope is the change in y over the change in x. That's supposed to be a triangle. That is the Greek symbol delta, which means change in. So here, my change in y was 3, positive 3. And here, my change in x was 1. And so I get a slope of 3. Now, graphically, I can plot these points. So I'm going to plot the point negative 1, negative 1, 0, 2, 1, 5, 2, 8, 2, 8, and you draw a lovely line. Oh, boy, I can't draw straight. OK. This is a graphical representation of this line. And if I wanted to find the slope, slope is rise over run. So I would count. I go up 
and I could pick any two points. Maybe I'll do points that aren't right next to each other. I'm going to pick these two points. Okay, I would go from here to here. So to get from here to here, from negative 1 to 1, 5, I have to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I have to go over 1, 2. So, up 6, over 2. It's always going to be positive because, well, never mind. So up 6 and over 2. So my rise was up 6, my run was over 2, and that reduces to 3. Luckily, I got the same slope all three times I found the slope using my different methods. If I hadn't, something would have been terribly wrong. And you'll see that from here, I can, I, I can go backwards, right? I could take these points and put them in a t-table. I could find the slope of the line, well, either by looking here or by looking here. And with the slope and any one point, I could get to point slope form, and then I would have it in algebraic form. Uh, the last representation is vertical. Okay, so remember, one of my algebraic representations was y equals 3x plus 2. And uh, if I were coming up with some verbal description, some plausible story that could explain this problem, um, maybe I could say, what's a good generic name? How about... Bob. Bob is a funny name. It's actually short for Robert. I would feel a little sad for anybody whose only name was Bob. Bob has two dollars. He earns uh, three dollars for every hour that he works. Uh, I use dollars and not another currency because in one, for example, my numbers would be much larger. So I, I picked nice numbers. Uh, find the slope of the line between two points. Magical words for slope are every or per Uh, so here, I have $3 for every hour. So that's $3, I'll use the dollar symbol, per hour. And that's $3 to one hour. And that's where that slope would come from verbally. Alrighty, that is multiple representations.